Hey everybody, it's Alexander Dahl with Manifest Vitality once again. Uh, so keeping with the current trend, we have another interview ready to go. So we'll go ahead and get that one um, out there. Um, we're still about a dozen or so interviews that I'm working on and doing. Uh, so those will be coming out. Um, other than that, we'll just go ahead and get straight into this one. All right. All right, so I'm currently on the phone with Caitlin May. She's one of the people that reached out to me about the current interview series going on. So I'm going to go ahead and give her the chance to introduce herself. Hey, my name's Caitlin May, and I'm a country singer from the UK. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you for having me on today. Sure, definitely. So I always kind of like to get down to the roots of it. So what, what, when did you kind of first discover music and what was it about music that really kind of, uh, you know, hit home with you that made you want to be a part of it? I have always loved music from the bottom of my heart and it's always been such a huge passion. And when I was, well, growing up, when I was two years old, my parents bought a holiday home over in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I just realized, I think, growing up and, and going out there like every year for our family holiday, mm. that it, it's just so much different o over there than it is over here. Because you get in the car over here and you turn on the radio and it's all pop music and the top 40 that, you know, everybody's raving about. Mm -hmm. And I would always kind of be quite lost because I was still on American time with all the country music in my brain. And mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even fathom what people were talking about oh this song hit number one and it was a pop song and I was like I haven't even heard that yet because mm -hmm. I just fell in love with country music and I, I do think that um, having that Florida home played a big part in sure. my influences Definitely. That was something that I was going to bring up. You being in the United Kingdom, it's it's a little bit awkward from my perspective that, you know, you have such a passion for country music. Uh, but that definitely yeah. makes sense. And that's where the connection came from. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Excellent. So once you kind of identified that, you know, you do like, uh, you know, the country music in the States uh, versus, you know, uh, the music scene that's going on in the United Kingdom, what were kind of your first steps into, you know, exploring that connection? What what did you do to kind of begin to explore the country music side of things? Yeah, so it was actually really hard to, well, I found it was really hard to, to just break through, make that first step into more country music connected things and, and more of a country music community because I knew that I wanted to do music from an extremely young age and everybody kind of thought oh that's just a young mind speaking everybody wants to be like the next Taylor Swift or like a singer and they want to be on stage mm -hmm. and obviously my friends growing up they grew out of that I never did I'm still there I'm still <laughs> in that place mm -hmm. <laughs> And so I obviously was, was telling my parents and pretty much anybody who would listen that I wanted to be on stage. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find anything specifically geared towards country music. And at the time, I think in my head, I was like, well, if I can't do that, I think music in general is just my passion. Mm -hmm. So I ended up enrolling in stage school and I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And we got to do dance and acting and, and dabble in loads of different things. But obviously singing was always at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we never explored any country music. It was a lot of musical theatre. So I spent a lot of time doing musical theatre productions and, and I did love it. And I loved being on stage with a cast, which was great. But then when I kind of came back to where it all started, which was country music, um, I was actually listening to a documentary about the Shires, which are a UK country duo. Mm -hmm. And I heard in the background when they were talking a Marin Morris song and it was my church. And they didn't say the name of the artist or the name of the song. So I was just like, I love those lyrics. I typed them in, found it hard at first to find the song, mm -hmm. but eventually I found out what it was called and I was like, I'm going to learn this song and perform it on stage. And that was just the first day that I was like, it may be hard to pursue country music in the UK, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it because I've never felt this way on stage singing a song before as I have learning my first country song and performing it. Mm -hmm. 
Sure, definitely. And, you know, that kind of uh, mix of cultures could definitely be something that's appealing to people, too. One of the things that I continually, continuously champion on my channel is the fact that oversaturation in the, in the music industry is actually a really good thing because it allows, you know, the listeners and the consumers of music to find the personality that they want rather than having it be force fed to them by you know, a limited availability. And so yeah. you being able to have that perspective as, you know, a UK country singer and providing still, uh, you know, the country stylings and songwriting, you know, there's probably a lot of people that are looking for that, that, you know, you might be the solution for. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that would be incredible. And I think I've always, <laughs> despite this being obviously quite a hard path to be on from such a young age, because mm -hmm your peers at least from my experience expect you to be a certain way and when they begin to change they expect you to begin to change and obviously I always had quite strong uh, quite a strong passion for country music so mm. I never veered off that path I always knew that I loved it so I think growing up especially like I said young minds they, mm -hmm. they think that's a little bit strange mm -hmm. <laughs> but I always wanted to stay true to that and I think something that is is not not a problem but it is definitely harder is people in the uk could love country music but they can't always travel to the us to see their favorite artists mm -hmm. and they don't always come to the uk to do tours as often as obviously they would in the usa and, and where they live so i think it would just be great to keep growing the country scene over here Definitely. So, uh, you know, you did kind of mention that, you know, you set your foot into uh, making country music uh, because of inspirations that, that you had. Um, what kind of steps have you taken to, you know, really kind of push into that scene into into the UK and, you know, create your presence as well as like your artist uh, persona? Yeah. Um, social media has definitely been a just absolutely amazing platform to to spread the word I think about about music and about performing and being able to do live streams because obviously there is a huge clientele for country music in the USA and if you didn't have a platform where you could scream and shout about it over here nobody in the USA would know about you because you're so far away and so that that has definitely been amazing. And I have actually found a lot more people who are interested in country music over here in the UK than I first thought. So I think country music is amazing. Um, no, social media is amazing to bridge that gap mm -hmm. because I, I thought, you know, oh, well, pe my next door neighbors maybe are not huge fans of country music. So mm -hmm. I, I can't find any fans of country music. And then when you use social media and, and you really use and um yeah, you use the things that are at your fingertips, you realize there are actually so many more people with similar interests out there than you think. And they're, they're not as far away as you think. So social media has definitely been a big, played a big part in that. And since the lockdown, I have been, well, slightly before the lockdown, mm -hmm. I started releasing my original music on all music platforms. Mm -hmm. so, so that was definitely another leap, but a great one because people can actually hear your material and not just covers. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So what are, uh, you know, some goals that you have that you want to accomplish? Obviously, you know, we'll, we'll leave spreading the music scene on the United Kingdom or, or the country scene in the United Kingdom. We'll leave that on the table because that's what we've been discussing. Like you personally, what, what are your goals in music? What, where would you like to see yourself in, you know, five, 10 years? I have always been a sucker for having huge life goals and I, I can't I can't make them miniature sized they're, they're literally <laughs> huge mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've always been a great believer in if you shoot for the moon and you fall you're gonna land amongst the stars mm -hmm. so it's great to have to have big dreams and big goals and for me again this hasn't changed since childhood really at all I would love to to be where the greats like Taylor Swift and Dolly Parton are one day and mm -hmm. the fact that they've made such a mark on this world and they'll always be remembered and you know you'll say their name and everybody will know, will know who they are mm -hmm. and again and also I, I've never wanted to be 
a carbon copy of any other artist that's, that's already out there because I think you should rock your own uniqueness. You should do what is you. And, and that's, that's the best way to be. So through my music, I always try to be authentic, I think, because mm -hmm. I've written songs which aren't my personal story, that they're just a take on somebody else's story. Mm -hmm. And then I realized when you write songs that are actually about something you've experienced, it's so emotional, but it's a really good feeling because you feel like you don't have to hide it and you're not holding it all in. You're actually letting it out and you're, you're telling people that it's okay to feel like that sometimes and other times it's, it's okay to feel this way. Every, every day is is different. Life is a roller coaster and songwriting is an amazing way to, to fuel your emotions. Well, I definitely agree with that. Um, so what are a couple of things that have happened to you surrounding music that kind of stand out in your memory, whether it be, you know, getting into it, learning to play music or playing live? Like, what are some really standout memories for you? Yeah, I I have some which I are like right at the top of my list and, and they were such incredible experiences that I'll never forget. But then I also have other ones which to me are not like... <laughs> they're not like incredible achievements like you know winning huge awards or anything but mm. they they really mark moments in my life where I just really loved music and I could just live in the moment so my probably my favorite moment was when I sang with Carrie Underwood at the Motor Point Arena mm. Mm. Um, that was her first time coming to Wales as well so that was really insane for me that was one of my all-time favorite experiences um and then one of the smaller ones would probably be when I was over in Florida mm -hmm. during one of our family holidays and I was always singing wherever I went and people were like oh <laughs> you know she oh, she's singing again <laughs> yes <laughs> and I was sat in before Brady's which was honestly one of my favorite places to go to eat when we were we were in Florida mm -hmm. and one of the waitresses heard me singing and she was like why don't you get up and and sing for everybody and I was quite young at this point so this was really early on in my journey with music mm -hmm. and she was like yeah stand up and I was quite short because I was young and she was like stand on the actual chair so I was <laughs> I was stood on the chair in the restaurant and everybody was just so incredible. And it was actually like a family. People I'd never even met before turned into a family. And I don't I literally just stood up and started singing. And that is something I've always been drawn to when like I, I just Florida is so different to, to Wales where we live mm -hmm. because I, maybe it is because my passion is country music and it's not quite as as widely spread over here. Mm -hmm. But I never quite found the same support system in like friends and, and you know, people that I met along the way over here as I did when we went to Florida. And I think it was just a shared passion because it's it's quite obviously well well loved over there. So it, it was just an incredible experience, even though that is totally different <laughs> to performing with Carrie Underwood. But it is something that I always remember. Sure, yeah, that's still definitely a very cool experience. Um, so what are some links where people can uh, check out your stuff and, you know, click on what they can listen to? Yeah, um, I'm Caitlin May Music across all social media, apart from Twitter, which I'm Caitlin May UK because I couldn't have that handle. Um, and then on Spotify and all the streaming platforms, wherever you listen to music, it's just Caitlin May. And I've actually late, lately set up a patron account, which um, patrons get early access to all releases. So between three and five days before my release, they'll get to listen to the songs, which has been actually something I've really enjoyed because it feels like a really personal platform where mm -hmm. you can speak almost one-to-one -one and, and really directly to people, which is really cool. And last night, it was really late for me over here in the UK, um, not so late for people over in America, mm -hmm. but I played a new song at the Bluebird Virtual Open Mic Night. So that's up on their YouTube channel and will also be on my YouTube channel in the next few days. 
Very cool. Uh, so I always like to give uh, the person I'm interviewing the opportunity to put out their last words. So just a message that you kind of feel resonates with you. Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing is just to always be true to yourself. And for people who may not, may just be, I think, lovers of country music or lovers of music in general, music can really touch you and, and any song can touch you. And if if you're not a singer, like I said, it can still be really great to write down things that inspire you and turn them into poems or songs, even if they're not something that is ever going to see the light of day, because we all have huge emotions and, and we should listen to them because songwriting has definitely been something that has helped me, especially through lockdown. And I think everybody's had quite a difficult time you know, throughout throughout these lockdowns and we could never have expected this worldwide pandemic. So I think just being able to be in touch with your feelings and emotions and getting to write them down is is a gift. 